Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we want to hear from you. So today, give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're outside in North America, you can reach us at area code 205 Two seven one two nine eight zero. You can always send us an email, Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, today we're going to have a wonderful show with a wonderful couple. Their names are Patrick and Joy Campbell, and they are founders of the Cross of St. Benedict Society. You can go to their website, crossofstbenedict.com, and they're going to share with us the story of their journey in marriage, in sorrow, in sufferings, in trials, like we all have, but um, it's an amazing story. And you will be encouraged Hopefully and we'll get to hear from three of their nine children as well, so they'll be with us also. I wanted to share just for a <laughs> moment, we had a blessed weekend being at the Catholic Grandparents Association, first uh, American conference and really turned it into be an international conference. People came from different parts of the world to be a part of this. And so we were there. We got to share a little bit. It's CatholicGrandparentsAssociation.org. And as we said after it, actually a couple of hundred people there. And I said to you, I'm just so glad we went. And it was better than anything I could have hoped for. And the assembling of of grandparents together and people who are seniors and, and getting to share with them and hear their stories of joys and sorrows and life and death and and uh, loss of their mates, uh, their children, the joys and sorrows of children, then grandchildren, some of them with great grandchildren, uh, just the treasure that seniors are, the treasure that grandparents are. And whether it's the Catholic Grandparents Association or, or what's going on in your diocese, somebody else came in for our conference and said, we just had 500 people at a senior day, I think over in New Jersey some, someplace there. And that seniors need community. I mean, we need to be together. And grandparents need to be together. And they weren't all grandparents. You, to be a part of the Grandparent Association, you don't have to be a grandparent, by right. the way. Um, but that community, that sharing, and, and how can we pass on the faith to our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Passing on the faith and keeping prayer at the heart of our family. So it was a wonderful time. We encourage all seniors to get the fellowship you need and to be better equipped to share uh, with your loved ones. Joy, let's share a little bit well, about what's going on <clears throat> in South Texas. We are praying for everyone that is in Texas that is so affected. Um, by this hurricane and also um, we pray for the repose of the soul. We know of five people that have died in that. Mm -hmm. And we want you to send the Texas relief efforts to contribute to the relief e efforts in Texas. You can contact your local diocese or the Knights of Columbus at kofc.org because we know the Knights of Columbus are on the ground doing great and wonderful things as they always are. And every diocese usually in the country, yeah. Yeah. we all usually respond. Right. Your, mm -hmm. A letter will come from your bishop and there'll be probably a special collection and a way to, you can then be a part of that healing process that yeah. they all need Everybody, to go through. Everybody, Houston, South Texas, we're all united together in prayer. And I'm sure many, many people are gonna donate. People are coming over there to help. You are not forgotten. Donna Marie Cooper O'Boyle is up next. She always has a good word, some good tips, and, and sharing about feeding your family's soul. Don't go away. We'll be right back. More to come. Welcome to Feeding Your Family's Soul. What's on the menu? Nurture your own faith. We need to nurture our own faith and truly believe it so that we can pass it on to the children. We learn in Hebrews now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. 
So here's some food for thought. I used to visit an elderly blind man at a nursing home. And my first time visiting him, he reached his hands forward and ran them all over my face. And that's the way he could see me. I was a bit startled because I had never experienced that before. In a certain sense, that man's gesture demonstrates how difficult faith can be even when we are literally blind. We struggle to see. And yet God calls us to have conviction about faith, these things not seen, even though we cannot simply put our hands out and feel. One time a sweet seven-year-old faith formation student whispered in my ear at class, I believe, but I want to believe more. Now doesn't that just warm your heart? How about this recipe for your family? Can you aspire to want to believe more? Can you nourish your faith with solid Catholic teaching from approved sources? You can check out EWTNRC.com. Let us pray fervently and learn our faith and trust that God will help us to grow it, to grow in faith and to pass it on to our children. And let us never tire of praying for families everywhere in our world. Every family needs our prayers. Show your family you love them. Eat dinner together. Until we meet again, bye for now. God bless you. Well, welcome back and thank you, Donna. Well, you are an important part of our EWTN family and we would love to hear from you. If you have a question for our guest today, Patrick and Joy Campbell, we want you to give us a jingle right here on our live show at 1-800 221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com. And hopefully we'll use your question or your comment right here on the air. Well, today we bring you this wonderful couple that God has done some amazing things to, for, and through. It's really been amazing. They are Patrick and Joy Campbell. And today I want you to tell our family at home, everybody who's sitting home having coffee, tuning in, listening to you guys, they want to hear your story of how we came together, how we drifted apart, how what's going on in this family, and to God be the glory. Yes. I guess it started off with a shipwreck. I, I, we were, when I met Joy, I was a single father of six small children, and she was a single mother of, of two uh, when we met. And we, were, we, were, we went through our annulment processes. That's a very healing uh, process that church, our Catholic Church offers. And, uh, and when we met, it was just a, a, a gift from God. It was just unbelievable that we thought that, you know, we could ever have this second chance. Um, and we, we took that family, and the, both families that were broken, and combined them into, into this yeah. one big How family. How did you meet, actually? Um, it was actually my my first day. It was by the by the obedience of my priest. I went to CatholicMatch.com, mm -hmm. okay. and uh, I wasn't going to, to ever. Your priest suggested that. Yes, wow. he mm -hmm. said you have to meet someone. I had six kids. I wasn't I wasn't dating, and I said stop looking for a wife and look for a friend. Yeah. And mm. so I said okay, and it was my very first night. Joy was the fourth person I read her, her bio, and I said, I want that in my life. Mm. And uh, it was Joy. It was my last day, mm -hmm. because I've been there for a long time, and it's like I started to have this fibromyalgia, and then I said, you know what, I can't sit so much here in the computer mm -hmm. no more. Mm -hmm. So that was my last day to log on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was saying goodbye to her friends, yeah. and then I decided to write her. Yeah. And then I found this guy, the profile, six kids, oh, such beautiful children. <laughs> they need a mom. But I was not thinking of me as a yeah, mom. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, I'm going to encourage him to go back to his wife. Mm -hmm. That was my goal. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. 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 So, you know, it's a healing process. The annulment process, you call it a healing process. I don't know if I've ever heard it called that, but for you it's oh. healing and for many it can be. Um, and so now, Catholic match, you know, mm -hmm. you're seeing each other. You begin to come, you meet at some point. Well, we were on the phone. You were on the she, phone? Yeah. For, for several months. Mm -hmm. She didn't even give me her phone number. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know if she was going to call me back. I just, every night after we talked for three hours, I'd just have to let it go and 
say, oh God, I hope she calls me back. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and yeah. for me, I have this extraordinary peace. And I didn't understand that because I said, I'm not going to call him anymore. But after I hung up, I, I just felt this extraordinary peace that I never felt before. So the next day, I would call him again. Mm -hmm. And then vowing that it was going to be my last day to call mm -hmm. him. But every time, each night, I just feel this ordin extraordinary peace. Okay. And so Catholic Match brought you together, but where did you both live? Well, we were on either side. She was on the, the uh, West Coast and I was on the East Coast. She was in mm -hmm. California. Mm -hmm. I was in South Carolina, you know, over a thousand miles away. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then after six months, he finally visited me. And after one month, we got married. Okay. <laughs> you surprise. know, you know, when you know. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you were married and lived happily ever after, which is really easy. <laughs> Did you have all, so you talk about nine children? Well, you know, were some out of the house at that point? Or no, were you no, so they you, were at You're full newly custody married, all kids, you yeah. have former well, marriages that were annulled. That's a lot to bring into a family. Your, your past to some degree, then the nine children. And, and culturally tell, different too. Yes. Tell us about mm -hmm. how that went. How was that, how did that go? Yeah, because I beginning. was, I'm sorry, yeah, because I was raising them that like they were like from four years old to 15. So you mm -hmm. could imagine that. And then, you know, it's like I didn't understand, but they were like acting in and acting out. Mm -hmm. And if I could describe divorce, it's like a nuclear bomb. Mm -hmm. And if you know the nature of an atomic explosion, you don't know who waged a war against you. And it's like, you know, you, you start to see, okay, it's like stealing your joy, it's mm -hmm. killing you, they're actual casualties, yeah. and there's la massive distraction in your life. So that's also financial, right? Sure. I mean, it's just so chaotic, and, and the world offers a solution to this. And of course, I made sure of that, and he had, at the time, a good health insurance. He mm -hmm. was a project manager mm -hmm. in an architecture woodworking firm. So I was like in and out of the revolving doors, you know, of the hospitals and the doctor offices, meeting the psychiatrists, the academic mm -hmm. counselors, the therapies. And of course, what's the outcome of that? They were medicated. Sure. And like a band-aid, they get mm -hmm. medicated again if it's mm -hmm. not working right. Right. So it's like, this will not end. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, everything is getting chaotic as days go by. And then I said, maybe we're not doing it right. Maybe we need a parental intervention here that we can learn from support groups. So we joined mm -hmm. local support groups. Mm -hmm. And then I said, maybe it's because of our large family. We're too many, right? Mm -hmm. So I joined an online large family support mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. And then I said, maybe it's public school. So, so we homeschooled yeah. all of them. I pulled oh them. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I homeschooled them. Nine against one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and at that point, it's like, I got to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, how can you like give more love if they're shooting arrows at you? I mean, their favorite Disney movie is Cinderella. And I said, how can that be your favorite movie? Mm -hmm. You're a young man. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. they're already. It's like saying that, okay, you're a wicked stepmom and, step and you're just here to steal the mm -hmm. heart of my dad. Mm -hmm. So that was what I was confronted with. But what I didn't know was that our Lord was presenting to me my cross. And knowing that I tried everything and knowing that I'm fearing the future, I said, no, I can't do it. So I removed my marriage ring and left. Mm. Wow. And then okay. where did you go? <laughs> so like any Catholic large family <laughs> mother, I went to the shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament mm -hmm. in Hansville. And that was my first time. And it So was you went all by yourself? With my um, sister. With my youngest. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And then it was so magnificent, you know, everything golden. It's like you were you're really drawn, mm -hmm. right? And I went to confession, and then the visiting priest told me, do you know that your stepchildren are actually your biological children? And I said, and then he continued, he said, by the grace and on the sacrament of matrimony and marriage, you are made one. Mm. And your flesh and his flesh are one. And then I got it. 
because that's the call of our Lord Jesus Christ. To love one another, He's actually challenging us to love beyond our family relationships. And what's happening to us is we're just focused on providing mm -hmm. for our own family. Mm -hmm. But we should equally love others and our neighbors, you know, with the same love that we give our family. Right? So naturally, I was so excited to give that news to him, right? Mm -hmm. She had something she wanted to tell you, Pastor. Yes. Well, she had no idea what was happening at the time. I, I, was, I was just, it was probably the, the worst thing that could ever happen to our life. Right. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. And then imagine it 10 times worse. Mm -hmm. The family just imploded. And uh, there was police. Some kids were in the hospital. Uh, Joy was gone. I'm panicking by myself. I'm having this nervous breakdown because I don't know what to do with the kids. I can't visit the other kids. Some kids were going to jail. I was just left with this, this no hope. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I tell the police officer, I need to call my wife. And he says, you know, I don't know any marriage that would ever survive after what happened to you guys. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so and then I she called. Yeah. She's happy. She called mm -hmm. happy. She yeah, found. Okay. Yeah. So and you're like, what planet are you on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was so like shocked because, I mean, you're there. Like I just encountered Christ, right, in the shrine. And then I said, okay, go to EW, EWTN, pick me up, and bring me home. So he drove the whole night, right, mm -hmm. six hours. Early morning, he didn't sleep. And he was able to make it to confession. And guess what? Father Anthony was there. Yeah, I knocked on the door and I said, hey, um, I said, I'm sorry. I, I drove all the way here. My marriage is in a mess. I'm about to lose my wife. Um, I need you to help me. And Father Anthony came up, but I'm a, I'm a workaholic at work. I never watched the TV. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm going on the air. And I said, air? <laughs> I heard of flying yeah. monks, but... <laughs> I didn't understand what he was on talking about. You're walking yeah. on air? Oh, yeah. yeah, on the air. Yeah, and so I said, I, yeah. are you going to help me or not? <laughs> mm. He counseled us for four hours. Mm. Four hours. And that was Beautiful. like very special in the ministry that we're doing right now. It's because not only did he allow the Holy Spirit to use him at the time, but also he accompanied us in our wounds. And that is the call of folk. Francis, you know, to accompany the wounded mm -hmm. in their woundedness. So it's like if we're going to look at, you know, the issues in our Catholic faith right now, you know, everyone's looking at the divorced Catholics, you know, and how to deal with it. They do need the sacraments. Mm -hmm. They do need the sacraments. And we cannot, like, treat them from the seat of condemnation and judgment. We have to look at them from the seat of mercy because they are broken in the heart. Mm -hmm. Because though the attack is in the family today, what the enemy is attacking is our hearts. Mm -hmm. So we see a lot of woundedness. You look around, you see, you know, the widow and the widower. They just lost their loved ones. So that's a wound of the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the mentally ill were, were like scared of them because they, made, they make our life difficult. You know? So... When, when the kids were growing up and they have to make that choice, I realized that I cannot make the choice for them to choose freely our Lord. Right? Yep. That's a scary time as a parent. Yes. Uh, right? Because you, b b before you can control them, you could tell them what to wear, you could tell them what time they're going to go somewhere, how they're going to show up, what's going to happen. But then you have to step back and now you have to trust Jesus, that he's going to meet them in their own journey, yes. right? Yes. When, when did your conversion deliverance take place at EWTN in Hansville? What year are we speaking about? How this was in 2008. Okay. So, so take us, you know, you experienced this leaven in you of the Lord. You got four hours of counseling or, and, and much, much more in that visit, and you're back together. What begins to take place in your family in terms of that good leaven coming into your family? Well, what happened was is, is Joy knew she couldn't change the kids, and um, she couldn't change anybody. Mm -hmm. So she realized in that, that talk at, you know, yeah. right here at EWTN that it was that sacrament of marriage. That sacrament of marriage tied us together as one. It was like a bungee cord. Mm -hmm. And that, that 
if we're attached as one, that means those children are attached to us. So if she wants those children to change, she has to overshoot the mark that they, she wants them to make. So they it pulled in tow. Yeah. So she decided, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So she started off with the rosary. And then it was the rosary every day. Then it was the kids. And then it was the chapel of divine mercy. And then she tried on a divine office. Mm -hmm. And then maybe daily mass. And what we started to see is the children started to become healed mm -hmm. because they were going to the sacraments. She was bringing them. But it wasn't exactly fixed just yet because mm -hmm. there was missing piece. And that missing piece was I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I was just working and I was a workaholic and I had 11 people to take care of. So I didn't have time to say right. the rosary, mm -hmm. go to daily mass. Mm -hmm. and, and she would call me up and she said, you know, just like Abraham, the blessing comes through the father and we need you to be the priest of the household. And I mm -hmm. said, what? I, I'm not I'm a trying priest. to be the provider. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I'm doing the best I can. We go mm -hmm. to Sunday mass. We're mm -hmm. Catholic. What more do you want? And mm -hmm. she says, I need you to lead us in the holiness. And I said, that's what I am doing. That's, she goes, well, I need you to pray more. And I said, well, I, I pray. She said, when? I said, well, I'm praying all the time. She says, I don't see you praying. I said, I'm praying right now. I'm praying you leave me alone, <laughs> you know? And, and so she realized that I needed that bungee cord yeah. too. Sure, let's take a, a call. Okay, this is Barbara. Barbara, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Patrick or Joy. Uh, hi, uh, this is Barbara, and I have been married um, twice. My first marriage was annulled, and my second marriage ended after 17 years. I've been single now for 22 years. Um, I just want to know how you can trust after all of that, because it seems like even though you take vows, marriage looks temporary. It doesn't look like it's forever. Yeah. Well, that, that's, a, that's a good question, because that's where the, the enemy is attacking right now, is the family. He is, a, he is working hard in these times. Right now, this is where the attack is. And it's on the couples, because if you can strike the shepherd, you, you can scatter the sheep. And so every family represents the Holy Family, the Trinity. So that's why Satan is so adamant to destroy the family now and to bring doubt into people's heart. And, and most of the times that we go out, we give conferences and, and, and uh, healing workshops, we're dealing with this, how can I trust that this is going to be forever? Mm -hmm. And the fact is, you cannot look at your spouse and trust that it's going to be forever mm -hmm. because your focus needs to be on Jesus. Right. And if it's on Jesus, then it doesn't matter whether they're with you or they're not with you because it really has to focus there on your relationship with Christ. And that's what we call the bungee cord effect because it's, it really comes down to the relationship with Christ because everything else will work its way out. But first, it has to be So the bungee cord right. kind of stretches. Yes. And so you're saying she has to stretch even further than many, and so do you, but you yes. weren't quite there yet. Mm -hmm. And then in stretching even over the, the children to some degree, it'll pull, hopefully, Lord willing, better chance of them being pulled forward towards the Lord. So what, what brought you around to, to, to really begin to, to manifest what were you, do, you were doing kind of internally a little bit? Well, the economy hit mm -hmm. back, you know, back when everything sunk. and. Uh, I, I was this, you know, in charge of million dollar projects and I was just so focused, I loved my job. And they called me in and, and, and my vice president was, was, he was kind of disappointed because he knew he was gonna have to take my job when they let me go. Mm -hmm. And I was devastated, all the hours that we put, the years that I put into this business and it all fell apart within that one hour. Mm. And I was devastated. Now all of a sudden, it made sense to get on my knees and pray the rosary. Mm -hmm. And it made sense to drive the kids to, to the mass. And then I found myself reaching out to God where I didn't before because yeah. I was just trying to get food on the table now. And we were, sing we were just spiraling out mm -hmm. of control because we were a large, a very large family, seven bedroom house. We had, you know, and I could, the boys eat like, you mm -hmm. know, wow, you know. <laughs> and, you know, it was just, it was, it was uh, God had put me in a place where he could, uh, take away that false God that I was doing this on myself. And I mm -hmm. had to depend on him. And it got real scary. Uh, we were losing the house. We, things were falling apart. Uh, Joy and I really had to come together and pray for our survival. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. what I needed. Yeah. I needed that. Let's pause right there. We hope this family story will be a great encouragement to you. At the darkest times, you don't know where to turn. 
You finally admit you can't do it, and you finally give space for the Holy Spirit, space for Almighty God to do what you can't do. We'll be right back. More to come. We want to hear from you. Be encouraged. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, remember that we want you to be a part of our show. So if you have a question for Patrick and Joy, just give us a jingle during our live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. And you can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com. Well, we're having this wonderful conversation with Patrick and Joy Campbell, and they are founders of a ministry. It's called the Cross of St. Benedict Society. You can go to their website, crossofstbenedict.com. Well, here we are back, and here's a third of your family with us. Why don't you introduce your beautiful sons to us? Okay, um, our smallest is, is Ignatius, mm -hmm. and, and he is 11. And then we have Talon. Talon is 19. Pray for him. He wants to be the priest. Talon's in the middle here, right? Yes, in yes. the middle. Talon is in the middle. He's a, he's a very good carpenter right now. Uh, he's my main apprentice. And Lucas is right behind him. Lucas is 16. And he is just an awesome mm. uh, carpenter and artist as well. Well, they're skilled and very handsome. No yeah. doubt about that. You were sharing with us right before the break, you know, about coming into surrender to the Lord, really through pain. It's amazing how pain works. Right, and it, and it was the way that God got my attention yeah. because um, I couldn't, at, at the time, we were spiraling out of control and the foreclosure was happening whether I, I liked to or not. And it, and it had been like maybe two years before I had a full-time job. I was asking families and friends if I could fix their doors or their mm -hmm. windows. And, mm -hmm. and, and I just didn't understand why God was closing all those doors for me. And it felt, as a man, it felt, mm -hmm. it felt very, very, um, uh, uh, lost yeah. as and and so on Joy's birthday, I didn't even have the flowers that I normally would give her, so I told the kids to come in the garage and we were going to make a cross, mm -hmm. and we spent all night designing, coloring it, fastening this cross. Iggy was the one who picked out the the pine, and in the in the middle, in the morning we presented her this this beautiful cross that we all made, dripping with stain, mm -hmm. and we gave it to Joy and she cried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I realized that God had answered my prayers, but not in the way that I wanted him to. Mm -hmm. But those, that, that cross gave us so much peace and it represented our family. And how she embraced it, I knew that any flowers that mm -hmm. I would have bought would have been nothing compared to what she had received in the cross. Mm -hmm. yeah. So every day I would come home from work, you know, knowing that what I was doing wasn't going to provide for us at the house that we needed, but I would make one cross after another. And because I was an architectural uh, woodworker, I had a large supply of exotic, uh, very expensive woods that I started putting in these crosses. Mm -hmm. And I felt like St. Joseph was it there. Wait, you know, working with me, and I felt that these crosses represented a family, and that they were precious to the Lord, and maybe these families were going through similar problems that we were, but I didn't know why I was making them. I just, I just knew I had to make mm -hmm. them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when we, when we did that, uh, we, we were trying to, I was trying to be more holy. I was trying to, to be that's uh, always so hard, isn't you it? You know, to be that priest of the household <laughs> that my mm -hmm. wife was because I knew I had to. Yeah. And uh, we became Benedictine Oblates. Mm -hmm. um, we, we ran into some sisters and they were funny and they were, you know, they, we said, how can I be more like you? And she says, well, why don't you come over and, and you know, become an oblate? And we started to, to go every, every month. So an oblate is like the, the lay association of the Yeah, it's like a third order, third order Franciscan, okay. yes. you know, mm -hmm. but it, we call them oblates because okay. we follow the rule of St. Benedict, who was, you know, uh, it's the reason why we've got 16 popes mm -hmm. named mm -hmm. Benedict. Yeah. He was a warrior uh, that was, that, that did battle with Satan. Right. When in four, 480, he was born and he was born a nobleman. 
and in his process he was going to college and learning it from pagans mm -hmm. and he said I can't take this I can't learn from from these and he dropped out and he went to the desert to go to be holy yeah. and that's where he did battle with Satan mm -hmm. he took two pieces of wood yeah. and while he was doing battle saying he tied them together and it repelled it repelled the evil right. one mm -hmm. because what it represented right. we lost our salvation at the tree of knowledge and Christ gained it at the tree of life. Mm -hmm. And so when he tied those, it told a story to the enemy, back off, the war is already over mm -hmm. and he was repelled. So not only does the cross represent the family, but it also represents what Christ has done for me. And he's our true family. Mm -hmm. He's our true blood. His blood is thicker than anything. And so when I started to make the crosses, I started to design them in a way that would tell the best story because not only does it educate me, but it will educate mm -hmm. other people and educate even the demons that they have nothing on us. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, in, in reading about you, Joy and I together, um, y you could speak to us about the beginning of the making of the crosses first for Joy, of course, but I'm really interested, and all these crosses here are beautiful, we need to speak about them, but I'm particularly interested in when you were making these crosses and hoping to you know, make a living, right? I mean, there's yeah. a mm -hmm. hope and you're making some out of living, but you're not making enough. And then you get to the point again of saying like, you know, look, this is really what I want to do for you. And it's not, I mean, you want to make a living, but it's more than that. It's, it's lifting high the cross and it just wasn't quite working out. And you kind of like gave, you know, you say, I got to get a secular job again. I got to care for my kids and, and my wife. This is a nice dream and yes. like a good dream that I have. What happened when you said, I guess we have to give this up? Yeah, so, so that's, that's where we were. We were doing this for four years. We were making crosses. We were talking to other families that were wounded. We were praying for families. We were making the crosses for other families. And we did this for four years. Mm -hmm. And we came back and our accountant said, you know, I you know, I know you, you did a great job. You made more than you ever did before, but you're not cutting it. Mm -hmm. And if this was from God, you'd be able to make something. You know, you'd be able to, to get out of debt. He says, you can't really even afford an accountant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would say, but the miracles we've seen and, and you know, and the children, right. we're all together, we're all mm -hmm. doing this together and, and it's from God. And, and he says, well, you know, it's not working. And it broke me because mm -hmm. that was the world telling me to give up. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember I was at my altar and we have a little altar at home that we pray at. And, and I was crying to our Lord and I said, Lord, if, if this is what you want me to do, I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about you. That's why I'm doing this. Give me a sign. Give me a sign because I'm, I'm yeah. beaten up here. And then my phone rang. And I almost didn't answer it because I, I thought, you know, I'm praying. I'm, I'm, praying. I'm praying. Don't I'm interrupt, don't interrupt me interrupt now. Me. <laughs> but I look over the phone at the caller ID. And on the caller ID, it says, Vatican City, Rome. Vatican City, Rome. Pops. That's a big call, Patrick. <laughs> I was afraid to answer the phone. I was like, Oh my gosh, I, you heard me, uh, <laughs> you, you heard me. And you weren't like in contact with the Vatican? Or no, really? I wasn't, no, this is nothing. So what was this called, well, like, would, uh, what happened? Well, it was, it was the International Charismatic Re Renewal in Rome. Mm -hmm. And it was the director and he, he said, Patrick, Patrick, we've been looking for you. <laughs> and only a rich Italian <laughs> accent. And I'm like, how do you know who I am? Mm -hmm. And they said, we've been, we've been praying about what we're going to do for the 50th year anniversary of the charismatic renewal. It's <coughs> coming up. We're all going to be here in Rome. But for the Ark and the Dove, where the charismatic renewal happened, we want to we wanna institute this huge cross, this big monument. And we prayed to God, who would make this? And your name was the only one that came up. And we've been looking for you for months. Mm -hmm. And I'm back. <laughs> That's an unbelievable story. I mean, really, that is an unbelievable story. So you got to make, how many, how many crosses did they want? No, that was just that one. That was one huge they, one. Now, did this go to Duquesne? No, what, yeah, it, it went to Duquesne. It okay. was at the, the Ark and the Dove, Pittsburgh. It's where the Ark and the Dove, the charismatic renewal was the birthplace. Right. So it's a retreat yeah. house mm -hmm. that people okay. can go to. Just. I'm getting excited. Time's going up. We better take this call or two, though. People okay. are calling in. We this want to is gather. Gary. Gary, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Patrick or Joy. How are you, folks? Good. We're doing great. Good, good, good. That's a really, really, really interesting program, and uh, I really commend you for the uh, the work you're doing. And uh, just just basically wanted to say that I don't really have a question. 
Um, but uh, I'm amazed at the, uh, the, the quality and the, uh, uh, the ver- various uh, yeah. types of different crosses and whatnot. And um, just wanted to say that it's, a, it's a great vocation or part-time vocation. And uh, I compliment you, and I, I pray for you. Thank you. You just moved you. your story and your family is, is moving people. So that cross that you built was a, a very large cross. Very and I want to know from these young guys here, um, are you involved with the making of crosses? That, that big cross that we heard yeah, about, yes. are these crosses? Or what's your part in all this? Well, in, in the big cross, I, I, I love making big projects. So, so whenever we make a, have a big cross, that would that, be my fault. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I made, a, we call them king crosses. They're three feet. First time I made it, my dad was like, oh, that's a lot of wood. And I'm going to say, we could have made... Ten crosses out of mm-hmm. that. I'm like, well, it's gonna look really beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, so we made it, and and it's we tried to present them so they could fund our missions because uh, our missions are we go at all over the United States and Canada. So it's mm-hmm. we only make a one at a time. Yeah, yeah. So. so beautiful. Lucas, what about you? Well, in the garage, I'm normally like work on the hearts with that. And that's really mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. And like just small little hearts. I love doing it because it's small in a way where like you could present them to other people. These are the beautiful And show hearts. the love and mercy that God has for so us. So you like working on hearts. The yes. Lo- you could hold them in your hand. Oh, yeah. You could take them into your adoration hour. You could take them with you. They're so beautiful and be praying for your family. And that cross on there, is that a Benedictine oh, cross? Yeah, it's a right? So if you're doing warfare, maybe you're at work and this is a helpful little thing to have. Or in the family, maybe you want to put it in your son's room. Just kind of put it there. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know what it is. He thinks it's a kind of an ornament of some sort. He doesn't know the religious power now, behind it. This is really beautiful. I mean, everything is beautiful. I'm not a craftsman, so I'm, but I'm seeing different, like, colors in this. Do you paint them or is it there, what, what's those going on? Those are the natural colors of the wood. So we get mm-hmm. exotic woods from different, those are from two different continents. Mm-hmm. Like bloodwood and this one's three different continents. So there's bloodwood, wingate, and uh, ambrosia maple. So those those are the, the um, symbolized. The, the one that you have there, Jim, yeah. is a marriage heart because it's made out of two species mm-hmm. of wood. There you go. That means Combined we're going to stay married for 40 more years. <laughs> And the one that you have, Joy, is a trinity. So mm-hmm. it has three species of wood representing the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Wow. So every, every cross, every heart, every sacramental has a meaning. This mm-hmm. is a, our fish sac- We call these religious sabotage mm-hmm. because sometimes people aren't here. They're not there. At, they have a cross in their office. Right. Mind. But when you bring a heart, nobody's offended right. by that heart. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, for in my opinion, being a Benedictine oblate is the most powerful sacramental the church has, mm-hmm. is, is the Benedictine medal. Because there's prayers of exorcism in there, right. you know, that repels evil. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows it. And you've mm-hmm. got a paperweight that looks like a fish on your desk. Right. And you're repelling evil. And you're repelling evil. And it's so, so great. It's a religious weapon. And people will come to your little <laughs> cubicle and go, it's so peaceful in here. Yeah, it's because I don't it's know been what. cleansed. Exactly. Right? We hear that it's all the time. Beautiful. So and now you classroom. have to construct this really large cross. Yes. Okay? And you don't have a place to do it. You can't do it. So what do you come up with? Well, you know, the, the idea was is, is that we were going to do it in our garage. Mm-hmm. And we start standing this 12-foot cross up, and I'm like, it doesn't fit. Mm. And it's raining outside. And I don't know what to do. Uh, we, and you know, when you take on a mission for God, sometimes the enemy comes at you. Yeah. Someone had stole and stole it's our. Like, I- oh, you're gonna build me an ark? Yeah. Like, yeah. like exactly. <laughs> where do I do that? You know. So. They, they, <laughs> someone had, had stolen our iPad, and they, they accessed our accounts, and then they were, they were taking. So our whole bank account was deleted, and we didn't have money at mm-hmm. all and I was I was like I don't know what I'm going to do so I call up my friend Lee John and he is uh, we're, we're partners with United for Life Foundation and we're spokespersons uh, for for him and I said well, I need a GoFundMe page I need you to help me out and he says well what's your problem I tell him what the problem is. and I said I said I don't even have a money to get a rent a car or rent a truck to get my cross from the where from my house to a warehouse and he and I said so I'm going to walk it at night so nobody sees me. And he says, you are not. You stay put. I'm going to call the newspaper. The next morning, 
I'm carrying the cross with my son Talon, and I got it on my back. Twelve foot cross. Yeah. How much does it weigh at this point? Oh man, it was like a hundred. 60, 180 wow. pounds, mm -hmm. okay. and uh, maybe 200 pounds, and uh, I'm carrying on my back, and all of a sudden there's police and fire chief and, and, and news reporters out on, on my front door, and they're talking to my wife, and, and for a second <laughs> I think, I'm in trouble. I'm not, su I'm <laughs> I'm not supposed. I'm for Jesus. <laughs> I'm not supposed to do this publicly. I was, I was terrified. Uh -huh. And the, the police chief came up to me and says, "Where are you going with that huge cross, Mr. Campbell?" <laughs> and I said to my warehouse if you let me. And he says, let you, we're going to escort you. Mm -hmm. The mayor was there. I mean, every, everybody in the town started walking behind me. What I was town is this? Kings Tree, South Carolina. We need more towns like Kings, Kings Tree, Kings Tree, Tree. Kings Tree. where all you know, the crosses are and made. You know, and that's, that's where providential. we met. That's providential. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? And you know, that, that town was so thing. loving. Mm -hmm. yeah. They came out of their windows. People were crying. People were yelling, thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. while we carried this cross through their little town. Mm -hmm to the warehouse, it moved me, it changed me, it made me realize, and some people didn't want to even look at me. I'd be walking right by him, but they couldn't move because the police were, were, were paving the way for me to get down the road, and they were like. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Some people, they can't acknowledge Jesus right at that point in their life, you know? He'll meet them where they're at, mm -hmm. but it was, a, it was an amazing, life-changing experience. So you were able yeah. to construct the cross at your warehouse, and then you had to get the warehouse, you had to get the cross to Pittsburgh. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm packing the cross up after we worked night and day with the mm -hmm. boys trying to get, it was an emergency to get this done in time for the charismatic renewal. These guys day. worked on it? Oh mm -hmm. man, yeah. I couldn't do it without them. These guys are the best carpenters. You know, Iggy, Talon, and Lucas, they are yeah, awesome. Um, I'm really proud of those boys. It would have taken about two months to make, but we had a, a month to do it. So we, we were rushing it. Yeah. So you so, were working around the clock. Working oh, yeah. around the clock. Iggy Ignatius, did he work on it? Oh, yeah. Are you reaching for the microphone? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, go ahead. <laughs> but they want to say, how did you work? I swept the floor. Oh. You swept, swept the floor. The floor. That's, That's a good the thing. Start. You need somebody, somebody to do that. Yeah. You, you need somebody to do that. Real yeah. servant there. Mm -hmm. Share with us some about these crosses that we're looking at. Okay. I mean, they're, they're awesome. One yeah. of my pride and joys, this is our Trinity Celtic. It's on a hard stand, but... Yeah. This would be the one that I would give Pope Francis if I could ever have that opportunity. If you're watching today. <laughs> <laughs> but this one, um, what I like to talk about, it's a trinity. So you have the three species of wood. You have bloodwood, bird's eye maple, and walnut. And so those represent the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can you point Spirit. them out? Yes. Mm -hmm. The walnut is the circle. It's yeah. after St. Patrick's. This is a Celtic circle. Mm -hmm. It's the continuous love of the Father. And it's inlaid, not nailed, it's inlaid. Just mm -hmm. like how St. Joseph mm -hmm. were to make mm -hmm. it, no nails. Inlaid into the wood, so that means it's integral. Into the bird's eye maple, the bird's eye maple, you can see the bird's eye maple. That's Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. bird's eye maple. And then the blood wood, and these are the original colors of the I wood. This that. is no color, no mm -hmm. stain. And then, so what I have here is these, these holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of creation. And on the eighth day, Christ makes all things new. So you have the Alpha and the Omega. And then at the, the bottom of the cross, at the foot of the cross, is our Blessed Mother. It's the second most mm -hmm. powerful wow. sacramental is Mary at the cross, mm -hmm. the miraculous medal at the foot of the cross. So that's our, our Trinity Celtic. That's and, beautiful. That's a beautiful and, corpus. And, 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 and anytime yeah. you see my crosses, I always cut out the hole in the back. So you can see St. Bendic in a little monastic hole there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really, uh, okay. I Let's really go to love doing one. Okay, so then we have uh, the sword cross. This is a church militant. The sword cross, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a church militant cross. This was, uh, it had its first debut on Long Ride Home, which is an EDWTN with the guys, the bikers. Okay. They, yeah. they, they held this cross up uh, several times. Uh, Lance Mackey held it. It has St. Michael at the foot of the cross, and it's made out of two woods. So if it's two woods, two species of woods, that means it's a marriage cross as well. Okay. And this is a good one for priests. A lot of priests order this because mm -hmm. they want to show that this is the true sword. St. Helena said, the true cross is the sword. I could tell the this is going to cost me because Joy's thinking about everything here. <laughs> Let's take a break at this point. It's Patrick and Joy Campbell, three of their nine children here with us. It's crossofstbenedict.com to the glory of God, lifting up the cross of Christ, bearing witness to Christ and the transformative work that the Most Holy Trinity could do in every life, every marriage, every family. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Please don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love for you to join us live right here on At Home. You could be a member of our studio audience. Today, you could have met Patrick and Joy. You could have been talking with them, and you could have seen all their crosses, and they are the founders of the Cross of Benedict Society. If you want to get more information on their work, just go to the Cross of St. Benedict Dot com. Well, right now, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan. Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, greetings from Rome to everyone at home. And I don't know if you know it, but recently, 450 former Swiss Guards and their family members attended the 27th General Assembly of the Guards in Soleur, Switzerland. Now, speaking to the group was the current commander of the Swiss Guards at the Vatican, Christoph Graf. And in a talk he gave to the group, he said it's perhaps only a matter of time until a Barcelona-style attack hits Rome. But he said, quote, the guards are well prepared to face any threats, notably terrorism. Now, of course, this was a clear reference to the recent ISIS video filmed in the Philippines where the terrorists destroyed a church and they tore up photos of Pope Francis and Benedict, and they also said, we are coming to Rome. Now, security at the Vatican has been tight for many years. You can go back to the Jubilee year uh, 2000 if you want to. It was, of course, ramped up for the Jubilee year of mercy that began in December 2000. 2015 and really, really ramped up after all these attacks we've seen with vehicles in, in Nice, Berlin, London, Stockholm, and of course uh, Barcelona. Now please know there are 110 superbly trained Swiss guards and as many perhaps a few more well-trained Vatican gendarmes. Now security in Italy and at the Vatican, it had, takes place with uh, police vans, police cars, um, under undercover not recognizable police agents. You have many jeeps with the army present at places. They're protecting monuments and embassies and churches and places where people gather, like Rome's celebrated Piazza Navona and also Piazza del Popolo. And by the way, lately, maybe the past week or so, helicopters have been on the scene. Now, cement barriers have also been strategically placed in many avenues, especially the broad Via della Conciliazione, which of course leads up to St. Peter's Square and the Vatican. And uh, another security measure, for example, yesterday at the Angelus, anybody wanting to enter St. Peter's Square had to undergo airport-like security measures for their backpacks and their purses. And um, this is true every day for entering the Basilica and also the Vatican Museums. And now the Secretary of State had a word to say about this, Cardinal Parolin, um, about the video. He said, obviously, one cannot help but worry, above all, for the senseless hatred in it. But the Cardinal said the Vatican has not added more measures to its already bolstered security. So, folks, it's sad times we, we live in. we got to pray for all those people who protect us wherever we are. So time's up, and back to you at home. Joan, thank you so much for that moving report and for that exhortation uh, to pray for each other, to pray for those that uh, intervene in people's lives in so many ways. We just have a minute or two left. Patrick, you have a beautiful, another one of your beautiful crosses there. This is our Trinity King Cross, and uh, we always say that uh, if you want your prayers answered, you have to go at the heart of Jesus. And to find out the heart of Jesus, let's find out what, what that is. Oh, my God. Do you see that? How beautiful. That's his uh, mother. His mother. Mm -hmm. his mother. That's ah. a miraculous, miraculous medal embedded into a Trinity heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a magnetic, magnetized. St. Benedict was just a man, like a piece of metal. But the closer he got to Christ, who is the magnet, he becomes magnetized and he draws other people to him for Christ. And that's kind of what we do with oh, our healing cool. ministry is we, you know, in our Joyful Hope Ministries, we, we meet families where they're at. That's a great catechetical mm -hmm. tool. Just imagine mm -hmm. having something like that in your home and having your grandkids or kids, and then you, you take out something it's and you get that little explanation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's what we try to do with all the families that what we pray with. What woods are in this? This is uh, three, three, three different species yeah. of woods, bloodwood, winge, and bird's eye maple. That's a trinity. And, and where do you get your uh, corpuses? corpuses from? Yeah, oh, Rome, absolutely beautiful. Rome, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, the, the, all the Benedictine medals were from Montesino. I think I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we we really put a lot. We put the precious woods, and then you know we put the the. 
the, the most beautiful corpuses that we can find to glorify our Lord. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much for being with us today. And you really did lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. You truly are transparent people that have opened themselves up to Christ and to his cross. You've been transformed. You can learn more about this family. They can come out. They, they speak all over the country and share the great things that Christ has done in their lives. And you see their beautiful work. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. You're never alone. And remember, September 9th and 10th is our EWTN family gathering. Go to EWTN.com. We'd love to see you in Worcester, Massachusetts. Be filled with all hope and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Bye now.